if you'd like to walk through the no irrigation zone, I could show you some of the plants that do well under absolutely no irrigation since 2005, or 2004 rather. Well, of course, the native yuccas, anybody from New Mexico is probably familiar with the yuccas. This one is yucca elata, the um, soap tree yucca, and you can see it has uh, very tall uh, flower heads on it. It's done flowering now. Most of the flowers has dropped off. But of course, these, these live quite well with, with uh, no irrigation in, in New Mexico. Uh, another one, this is not native to uh, New Mexico, but the Siberian pea shrub. Uh, does very well without irrigation. This one, like I said, hasn't had irrigation since 2004, uh, five years, and it's still hanging in there. Although this year has been very dry, so it's looking a little bit worse than it normally would uh, when we get a little rain. Golden rain tree, this is another plant that's not native to uh, New Mexico, but it's doing quite well under very limited irrigation conditions. Another plant most New Mexicans are probably familiar with is the, uh, the tree cholla. And once again, there's a plant that does very well without any irrigation uh, whatsoever after it's established. That plant was actually planted last year, so it's, uh, we only irrigated it for about half a year uh, in, uh, in 2009, and then we cut off irrigation this year. 2010. The um, big, big sage, of course, is another plant everyone's familiar with, very common in New Mexico, especially the northern part of the state. You see the sage everywhere, but it can make a very attractive landscape plant. Uh, you can see this one hasn't really been shaped. It's, it's uh, been trimmed a little bit, but it, it makes a nice specimen uh, and is native to our area and requires no irrigation once established. This plant is a palmer pen stem, and these are very common in New Mexico. Once again, another plant that does well without, uh, without much irrigation after establishment. There are many different pen stems in the state that are native uh, to New Mexico and Colorado that would do quite well in our area up here in northern New Mexico. Uh, this one has already done flowering, so, but it'll, it'll put on pink flowers earlier in the summer, and then maybe later again in the fall if, if it's trimmed back. So you can cut the dead flower heads off. Once they dry up, you can save the seed for replanting, and then usually the, the plant will uh, reflower again in the fall. Another native uh, from New Mexico uh, is a New Mexico olive or Forestiera uh, neo-Mexicana, and it's quite common up in our area, grows along the San Juan River. Um, it uh, does very well once established without irrigation once again. Uh, doesn't require a lot of care. I'd recommend this, uh, this, this tree as a specimen uh, or even a, a border, uh, even a, a short windbreak, uh, possibly. But it's a very attractive tree and it'll produce olives. This one is not uh, producing olives right now. It's probably a male plant. Uh, and uh, we'll see a female over here later on that may have some uh, some olives on it. Don't, don't confuse this with the Russian olive, which is, uh, has been a w big weed problem along the, the rivers and is not native to New Mexico. This one is native. Um, mountain mahogany, another native plant, a good tree for the, land, the unirrigated landscape, requires very little care, uh, grows kind of natural, doesn't need much pruning uh, or trimming. Uh, attractive uh, plant for the uh, desert landscape. The uh, golden currant, this one is in the no irrigation zone, and this plant is a, is a very well adapted to, to New Mexico and, and throughout most of the United States, western United States. Here, uh, you can see it's not been irrigated for five years, so it's not really doing that well, but, uh, but it is surviving. Uh, in, the, in the irrigated zones, it, it's uh, looking much better and produces uh, edible berries that you can make jelly or jam uh, from. Here's a golden currant uh, that has received irrigation, and you can see the, uh, the dark berries on it, the currant berries. This one has received about uh, eight gallons of water per week. So keep in mind that, um, that this is a research study and these plants have not been irrigated. Uh, like I said, our primary goal here is to uh, rec be able to recommend plants that require very little care, very little irrigation, but will still survive. Uh, and then we also wanna make recommendations on the amount of water to apply to a particular landscape plant to get that acceptable appearance or acceptable quality that, you're, that you may be looking for. The Maximilian sunflower, not another native plant, but once again, under no irrigation is not, uh, 
uh, the quality is less than desirable, but you can still see it's hanging in there. So these are plants, if you want to go on vacation for a couple of weeks during the summer, you don't really have to worry about, about irrigating them. You can come back, put irrigation back on, and, uh, and uh, they'll, do quite, uh, they'll do quite well. Coenia mexicana, the cliff rose right here, it just finished flowering. Uh, it's a very beautiful plant when it's flowering, kind of a yellow, uh, yellow, white, ye yellow and white flower. Uh, and it'll be very pro profusely flowered. It'll be just loaded with flowers, but this was earlier. This is uh, toward mid-July right now and end of July, and uh, many of these plants have already flowered. The flowers have dropped off. But this one, once again, another good plant for the, the unirrigated landscape. Here's a plant that, uh, believe it or not, has not gotten any irrigation since 2004. Uh, this is called fern bush. It's not really native to four corners of New Mexico, but it is uh, more native to Utah. As you can see, uh, it attracts a lot of small wasps and bees, so it's a plant you probably wouldn't want to put right next to your front door. But uh, normally these insects are, are busy uh, eating the sap from the flowers and are not too concerned about, uh, about you when you walk by it. But this is uh, probably my favorite shrub uh, in the garden because it is so drought tolerant. Like I said, this shrub has received no irrigation um, and it's doing quite well. As a matter of fact, it's probably the biggest specimen out of all of them in the garden, even bigger than the ones that have been irrigated. And a lot of nice white flowers in the middle of the summer. It seems to love the heat. The banana yucca, another native to uh, northern uh, New Mexico and Utah, uh, Colorado, southern Colorado. Uh, very nice yucca plant, uh, produces these banana looking fruit and, and so its name. It does very well under no irrigation, but as you can see, it's very spiny, it could be dangerous. So it might be a plant you'd wanna keep away from the children or, or uh, pets or something that might end up getting injured by the plant. Uh, here's a plant that's not native to uh, New Mexico, California brickle bush, but it's doing quite well here in the no irrigation zone. It's a very late plant, so it will stay, it will almost appear to be dead early in the spring and even early in the summer and it will not start leaving out until uh, summer. And then it'll put on some yellow flowers later on. That seems to be doing quite well here under no irrigation. Uh, most people in uh, southern New Mexico at least will be familiar with the desert willow, uh, Chalopsis linearis. Uh, you can see it puts on pink flowers. This one has uh, was flowering profusely about a week ago and many of the flowers have already dropped off. But this is a favorite plant, favorite tree of mine, and uh, I'm sure many people who live in New Mexico, you see it all along the uh, medians and highways down, in, uh, down around the Albuquerque area, and uh, they do quite well so in the southern part of the state, but they're also doing quite well here in northern New Mexico. Uh, this one has not received any irrigation for five years, and you can see it's doing quite well. And as a matter of fact, it's probably just as big as the uh, other specimens that have received irrigation. Three-leaf sumac, another uh, native of uh, New Mexico, and one that's uh, very suitable for a screen or a hedge or even a specimen plant in the landscape. But as you can see, it's very densely um, it's a very dense plant, so it makes a very nice screen, a very low screen or low uh, uh, windbreak, and uh, good wildlife uh, food. The, the uh, berries are eaten by wildlife, and you can also make uh, uh, jellies or jams out of this, uh, the berries that this plant produces, the three-leaf uh, sumac. Uh, the service berry over here is another native, especially to our area up here in northern New Mexico, seems to do quite well on, on northern north-facing slopes but it's doing quite well here in the Xeriscape Garden. And once again, here's a plant that hasn't received irrigation uh, water for five years, but it's still hanging in there. And as a matter of fact, it's probably larger than some of the other uh, ones that have been irrigated.